Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Coffee with Jim and James. Thank you for joining us this week. James, how are you doing? And have you recovered from EWN Con 2022 yet? I don't think so. I don't know when that happens. I don't remember what normal was like, you know. Uh, Monday was funny kind of coming in and wondering what, what was life like before EWN Con. Uh, as Coleman said, it's been 31 months since our last one. So if you know anything about events, usually you start planning the next one. The day dur- after. Or during, right? You're already correcting things. So this right. one's been in the works for a long time. So it feels good to be done. But, uh, you know, still buzzing from it. Uh, there were so many communications flying back and forth over the weekend. I was blessed. I disconnected Thursday. I planned ahead. I knew I would go hard into the final weeks of EWN Con. I wasn't sure how hard. Uh, I'd learned that later, but thankfully I had planned ahead and decided to go ahead and take Thursday and Friday off. So I was able to disconnect and recharge and fill my cup some other ways. Um, and then it was nice to come in Monday and say, all right, you know, how do I start reaching back out to folks and, and catching up? you know, digging out from my email from not answering it for a couple of days. What about you? I did a little bit differently. I'm, I'm still uh, following up from it. I took, uh, I traveled Thursday, so I took Friday actually in the weekend. The nice thing about our industry is that it is definitely um, friend-based. So to it's not eight to five, you right. know, it's night times, it's weekends and to follow up with a lot of the friends over the weekend, just seeing how they were doing. A lot of those conversations with friends are definitely business topics, but they don't seem like business topics. Making sure everybody traveled home safe. Yeah. That kind of stuff for sure. Yeah. You know, making sure everybody's good, you know, following up this week is definitely the week after is a heavy follow-up week, just because you have so many conversations where you end up saying, you know what, let me reach out to you, you know, next week or two and we'll follow up on that. Yeah. There's almost like you've got a stack of stuff that are real conversations that, that you want to get, you know, working through, but then also you just think of little, you know, little engagements that happen at various points. And you're like, man, I need to reach out and thank them for, for sitting down with me for five minutes. So, yeah. Um, Jimmy, we, we were kind of pregaming this a little bit and we said, we didn't want this to be the normal, uh, look, we've been talking about EWN Con, you know, it's been a pep rally for a while now. Yeah. What we didn't want to do is come in here and just continue to belabor it. So we wanted to talk about it. You you had a great idea, kind of talking about it like we do other conferences, you know, good, bad, ugly, you know, um, and taking it from that angle, no different than any other conference that we might attend. So um, in that vein of thought, what for Jim Shower, the conference goer, the industry icon, as some might say, um, some might say, please. What Dude. what made what made EWN Con different for Jimmy Shower? The, the, this event. Oh, oh like you a ghost in here. Oh, you careful. see that? Uh, this conference itself, or just in general, how this one compares to other industry events where you both i mean really i mean how does it compare to its to past events because you've been involved in several of those of our mm-hmm. own and then also you you've been to a lot of industry events you know how is it in comparison you know across the, the board yeah I, I remember my first ewn con in 2017 when i was ceo of big pen energy there we go mrc global shout yeah, out shout out yeah uh, 2017, we were a client. Uh, we were invited to EW account. We didn't know what it was. We heard it was a Texas Motor Speedway, and we had the ability to bring a 40-foot LNG tanker into the infield. And I'm like, we're doing it. And the biggest thing, you know, two things. One, 
for EWNCon, one for myself as well as anybody, just to get in, involved and ingrained into the EWN culture is an experience unto itself, one. Two, to really realize that this isn't a rah-rah session for Energy WorldNet. This is Energy WorldNet putting ourselves, themselves, all of us out there to help the industry be better and to get together and to collaborate and to learn and to share ideas. And so it's really, it, it, it's an incredible mix of training, sessions, thought leadership, networking. And, and again, I never want to downplay networking because if you know me and you know me in the industry, networking is friendship. Friendships are respect. Respect is trust. And so when somebody calls me and says, hey, do you know anybody at Huntsville Utilities? I could say, well, I know the Colonel and I can introduce you, you know, and, you know, connect the dots quickly because somebody has a need that they need to talk to somebody or, you know, anybody in the industry that I know of. And so it's, it's that continued friendships. And it, when you look at that industry and you look at our attendees and the ones that are there, they're, they want the best for our industry and they're willing to give their time, energy and resources to, to participate. And that's a wonderful thing. So it's, it's very unusual, not unusual, but it's, uh, it's very unique. The, the whole mixture of it where it makes it just this wonderful, exhausting three and a half day event where at the end you're like, wow, you know, right. and, and it does take a day to decompress two days, probably everything. Yeah. And I think a lot of people probably think, oh, so it's all OQ stuff. Um, I mean, yeah, I guess, but not really. I, no. I would say our agenda on the main day. Um, yeah, it was probably 90% non-OQ, but nine, 100% our industry, right? So um, it, it, maybe not what people would think. Um, you, you mentioned it kind of transitioning it from a user conference to, you know, an industry event. I think yeah. it's a good way to think of it. And I think this one really took that leap because we were, um, so intentional in the delivery to bring a lot of different vantage points to the table, right? Like, 100%. yeah, there were, I mean, straight up industry icons there from segments of all kinds. I mean, from damage prevention to pipeline safety, to uh, compliance and regulation, to, to OQ, to some of the biggest vendors, distributors, you know, period thought leaders, it's yes. a great way to Absolutely. thought leaders, period, across our greater segments of the, the energy industry were represented well. Absolutely, 100%. And, and when you think about that, when you think about that, that mixture, that is dynamic. And the conversations that would not have happened had they not had the opportunity to be in the same proximity. Yeah, yeah proximity together. But, you know, that that also goes, James, really. I mean, you you could, you know, take that down to the granular, granular level of Energy WorldNet. Okay? Yeah, for, for me, one of the craziest byproducts of this that I didn't really factor in myself, and I know it's going to sound bad because I'm the culture guy, and so I should have. I should always be thinking that. But I'll be honest, too. The last six months have been focused, hyper focused on EWN con, the yeah. deliverable, right? As you can imagine, if you were there, you understand it. The logistics, the vision, the all of it, right? Um, it was a it was a lot. So one of the neat things, and I got to experience it myself, and I picked up on it really quickly, even on day one, which was Monday was all right so our culture for the last jim and i were kind of blown away that this is the right amount of years but for the past four years now has really been built around team building together sure. fellowship together as often as we could which back in the day was quarterly we brought our team together all in one spot 
And we made it mandatory and we made sure people sat and broke bread with each other and did things. And I'm not talking trust falls and stuff, but there were some people that went rock climbing, you know, but, but made sure that they spent time and quality time together. And then we were robbed of that over these past two years. And, and I mentioned it in, in my intro speech, but we grew a hundred percent over the last 31 months. Okay. As a, as a, as a company. Okay. It is. It really is. We're really proud of that. During the pandemic. But what that means when you translate it is that over half of our company has now worked. They were, they were recruited, hired, onboarded, and have worked their entirety within these, you know, hybrid or remote work environment, right? In a pandemic. So we were robbed of that luxury of bringing our teams together. And we got to do that. And we didn't have everyone there. There were still some people back at home working and some remote people in various situations didn't make it in. It wasn't 100%, but a lot of teams got to sit together. And Jim, you and I talked about the value in seeing the people that you stand shoulder to shoulder with doing whatever it is that they do their best, right? So if it's gym shower, it's networking. Let's say that's your thing, Jim. I'm just throwing that out there. It is. Seeing Jim do that. Seeing our designers glow as they watch, you know, their things come to life in this amazing yeah. arena. When you see, you know, a Matt Joyner and a Crystal Stromberg sit back and watch their training day just turn out, you know, as yeah. they envision. Those type of moments, seeing Tracer, you know, have its moment. Um, It helps you to remember that why you trust that person next to you, right? Or, or why you can take heed that 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 department has it covered, right? So that byproduct was unbelievable. I sat down with so many of our own people that I'd never met. Well, number one, first time. Yeah, you you said that too. but also I sat down with people that I'd grown accustomed to sitting down with over the last six years, like whenever I wanted. And I've been robbed of that too. So I imagine that there were several others within our group. I've talked to so many since that felt the same way. Right. And imagine being one of the half that has never got to do that. That's the part I'm talking about. I don't even know how that feels. And it was great for me. But what about for those people? That's got to be, you know, uh, the best byproduct of all. Well, yeah. And let me just elaborate on that, because in my mind right now, you hit on the aspect of the, the veteran team members, as well as the new team members in energy world that again, getting together and team building. And, you know, me, I'm, a, I'm one of those that thinks a little bit that farther down the road, the team building that I saw with our team, the Energy World, that team, team building with the industry. Yeah, that so too. I can't tell you how many conversations I passed by where, you know, somebody said, it's always great to either talk to you on the phone or, you know, we've always, we've emailed for yeah. years now and now I get to meet you. And, and the spark that happens with that, and I, I told a few of the team members there, I said, now watch, when you go back over the next, you know, week, month, over the next mm-hmm. year, and you have a conversation with he or she, and it's going to be a different level because now you've got to see them face to face and eye to eye. And you built that yeah. rapport and that trust in person, and not I, just on the phone. I'm going to relate it to, uh, to a department, to, you know, down to a level people might understand, right? Do it. Is, is let's say we have an instructional designer that works in our education department. And that is, is new and which we have a lot of them. We've hired a lot over the past couple of years in a pandemic. Okay. So they have never put their hands on maybe uh, a device. They've never, you know, over these past two years. So they are learning. They now get to put their hands on some of these things. Some Look, we have a few, I'm not saying that I'm saying all of it. They get to meet the person that sells it, uses it. Yeah. And now when they're writing the course and they read, um, you know, radio detection or they read 
fill in the blank, right? Line locating, whatever. They visualize that person. They know that person, you know, is doing it safely and why they do it. You know, they're able to connect those dots, which you're, you're exactly right. I cannot imagine. I struggled to find my place in this industry. I know that sounds funny now, but for a while, I didn't know why, because I'd never been out there. Couldn't, couldn't understand why this was important. I need to understand why I do things that I need to do. Right. Like for me personally, that's how I'm driven. I want to know what my purpose is and why am I here? And if it's just to pad the pockets of others, then that isn't going to really get me out of bed every day. But if I can look someone in the eye and go, it's to bring that person home. I suddenly know what my job's all about. Right. And you're dead on with that. Yeah. And you're, when your passion and purposes align, it's a beautiful thing. And I, I, it was in my mind because you were talking about the people that may not have been out in the field and such. And it took me to uh, the main Texas live venue, two floors. I don't even know how big this thing was. It was spread out and trade show booths, we call them. And a lot of people think that those are sales booths, right? You know, they're there to sell. When in reality, I look at those as educational islands where you go there and you understand what the value, what the product, how it works and such like that. And I witnessed a lot of the people that you were talking about going around to those and asking questions. And a lot of the vendors brought in devices to show and share, or they had TV screens up. And a lot of people that from our organization, that was a lot for many, that might've been their first industry conference could have been, you know, for them to meet, see and understand that from that perspective, you know, when you can have the passion of somebody you know, at that booth that has the same passion that we all have for the industry, just sharing why this is a great thing, why this makes us safer, more productive, better, whatever the case may be. And to hear that and to see it and to feel it, unbelievable. Epic. Yeah. Is I'm going I'm to hit one more point before we get off this. We'll Do, it. On. But Do it. I, I think, too, there's a common misperception that we are going to go to a conference. I'm going to take us, for instance, Energy World. You and I? We, um, sure it doesn't really matter okay. but Just um, energy world net right okay. so I, I work for energy world that i don't know much about conferences and when you someone says you're going to a conference my vision without knowing what it's like is that everyone there is going to be talking about operator qualifications oh. and all the people that are there are going to be people that i sell operator qualifications to right Like, that's what's in my mind. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be terrifying. Everybody's going to walk up and be like, so tell me about it. And I don't know anything about it, right? I'm new, I'm saying. Yeah. All right. When reality, you go there and there's about eight people in there that deal in operator qualifications. And guess who the rest of the people are? They're project managers. They work in technology. They do stats and analytics. They are engineers. They are uh trainers they are educators they are um directors and leadership people so you know what's funny is seeing one of our people talking to someone and they're really two project managers talking you know yeah they're probably talking about us (laughs) about how hard it is to manage our projects but that's the reality is you go there and they're just a bunch of folks like us. They're salespeople, just like sales. There are account managers and account execs and there are marketing people. And like, I promise you, there's someone just like you there. Oh yeah, uh, there were. And I, trust me, we, we chatted. Are you talking about me? Specifically? Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I'm right. So hey, James, we had people from HR in the industry attend the conference too. I mean, when you think about it, it, I mean, it really does. And they were very interested in the cultural aspect, to be honest with you. Man, it was a hot topic. I talked to a lot of folks after my intro, and then I was blessed to be able to teach on the training day. Yeah. And uh, with Veronica Mars and we, um, it was about leading people, not like you, you've done it. We've done it. It's It's a great one. One of my favorites. Absolutely. And so, Um, I had some great conversations with folks that pulled me aside after that. And they were like, I just tell me about chief culture officer. I don't get it. You know, 
And so I get to sit down and just tell them about it. And that, so I had a lot of great engagement like that, which tells me people are, are all ears on it. And I, I, my job was to paint the picture of how we treat our own people and how we focused on it because I thought it was important because I like to know that of who I do business with. Sure. You know, it says a lot. If you're not going to take care of your own house, then you're not going to take care of mine. Yeah. Right. That's. Yeah. And so it was neat to see it come to life. And another thing that came to life, Jimmy, was our new campaign. So we've talked about this for a while now, but the reality was, was we were in a pandemic and it's hard to launch things in a pandemic. <laughs> and so um, this Be Brave campaign that Absolutely. we really built the conference around, I was really excited to see it come to life and, and really paint the picture of, of what we're asking of the industry. You yeah. know, uh, the, the goal behind it originally was we challenged ourselves just high level story. We challenged ourselves. We went through a rebrand, but also it was about user experience to begin with. And we wanted our brand to match who we were and we wanted our products to match, you know, the level of, of products that we deliver. And so we went through this giant commitment and blew up everything we knew, you know, of the last 25, 26 years and challenged really the way we were thinking and it was a brave moment for us and it hurt and it was scary and terrifying and then we kind of bloomed out of it right and finally we got to show it off of what was in our heads this whole time and um, what we've been meaning to say and wanting to say and so we finally got the platform to kick it off and we and we needed that too you know we needed that platform to do it. I have to tell you, we, you know, you and I actually took up to a whole different level on Monday night when we did a lot of impromptu coffee with Jim and James, little short segments, but we, we let our, ended every little two to three minute conversation mm -hmm. with what does be brave mean to you? And we didn't set that up. That was, we're, we're going to ask you a question, you know, guest, and they had no idea what was coming in the diversity and mm -hmm. the, you know, what that all meant to everybody. And it didn't take people long to answer that question. You know, they thought about it for like maybe three to eight seconds and then they just shot it off. And I love that aspect of it because that comes it was, from, it was know. fun. And seeing the theme, the theme, the campaign, whatever you want to call it, woven into the entire day, you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, was a nice touch. Um, Jimmy, I just, I didn't even tell you about this, but um, I oh, tell no. you what, we're, we're going to, we're going to let everybody watch the intro video from the conference. Uh, so we're going to cut to the video real quick and then we'll come right back. Brave. What do you think of when you hear that word? Our first responders, the men and women who risk their lives to defend our freedoms or the pioneers whose innovations have carried us to new worlds. Without a doubt, these are the courageous figures that embody what it means to be brave. But at EWN, brave isn't a word just reserved for our uniformed heroes and the names in our history books. For us, brave is a word that's found much closer to home. We believe that brave is a frame of mind, and in every case, from the history book hero to the everyman, we believe that the spirit of bravery is revealed in the unflinching service to others. And that, ultimately, is about you, the people we serve every day. We've put smart tools in hardworking hands. We've provided a platform where partnerships begin and flourish. And we've done more than just build safety programs. We've built a team that truly wants to make the world a safer place to work. We want to inspire individuals, groups, and industries to courageously step forward and to meet a need wherever they find it, in the big things and the small. So be brave, claim your seat at the table, and let's build something awesome together. Pretty. Pretty oh, that, awesome. That's what I'm talking about. That's yeah, cool. That's fun. 
it, yeah. it, for those that were there, it was pretty epic on the big screen. You know, if you've been at a Texas live or a, a live event somewhere like that, it was neat. It was really neat to see it come together. Yeah. And if you haven't been to one, you got to go because a picture absolutely helps. But when you're there live and watching this, what I, I would call it like a football stadium type of screen. I mean, oh, no doubt. Right? No doubt. Yeah. It's a sports complex. So it's really built for, you know, showing, showing off. So it was really cool on there. Um, you know, Jimmy, I think that does a great job of, of bringing to life the message of this campaign, but I was really proud, you know, at, at different points throughout the conference because it, number one, we wo wove it. Is that the word? Man. Yeah. Wove, wove it, it through. Throughout. Right. So our, our intro kind of set a tone with the videos and everything. And then, our panels brought it to life because they were the ones actually out being brave, right. And personifying it. And then we wrapped it all with Tim Kennedy, which, oh, wow. I mean, I got to sit down with him. You did too. Um, yeah. And it was, he's such a good dude. Um, he, um, man, he, he brought it home. I felt like that was the right keynote for the right time. And what a better, no better message to kind of end on. Uh, I had so many people and he had a line of people take pictures with afterwards. It was really cool. Uh, and just a good dude. Um, yeah. So much about him. I had story. no clue. We can't, we can't even, we can't even give it justice in if we devoted a half hour right now. So if you don't know Tim Kennedy or if you do know him, go uh, Google that name real quick and take a look at everything that he's done. So neat. So I'm excited to see that campaign continue to, to, um, you know, come out uh, from the shadows there yeah. um, at EWN Con. That was the moment we launched it. So from this point forward, we're going to be pushing out some messages and stuff built around that. So really cool. Um, and we may have a new question for guests for a while, you know, it's just no, no great pressure. Question. You know what? It's great because it's it, the answers were personal. They were business. They were all over the spectrum. Yeah. So. Jimmy, one last thing. I think um, I think it's worth noting. You brought it up in the pre-show, and that is just the value. It's going to sound like we're beating a dead horse, but uh, the value of in-person. Oh. I mean, EWN Con for us, obviously, it was our own event, so we're biased. But just the amount of people to be able to take five minutes and sit down with somebody and catch up and, and talk with them about business. And some folks were just came up and was like, well, I don't know how we're going to work together, but we'll figure it out. You know, right. those types of things, uh, or are you hiring? <laughs> that was very popular as well. Yeah. Um, but you know what I mean? Like those types of things are just so big. And I don't know that we've, that we, that we weren't, we haven't taken it a bit for granted the last two years because you know what? Remote's kind of comfortable. I'm not wearing shoes right now. You know, full disclosure. You're All probably right. in shorts. You I'm know, in golf shorts. I'm in Florida. I okay. Mean, like, down. but that's reality. And, and we talk ourselves into it because it's an internal dialogue that we're telling ourselves, like, this is better. But the reality is, is last week, again, proved to me the value of in-person. Yeah, and, and if I can make a plug for, I'll just say for industry conferences or industry trade events or whatever the nomenclature is, I, I have to say, I, I'll, I'll challenge all the leaders out there that you know when you have somebody on your team that wants to go to an association event or an industry event, and they mention networking, please do not put that as, a, oh, they're just gonna go pat each other on the back and not the conversations that happen at these industry events are unique because people go there and it seems like the walls go down and the thought process increases and people, you know, from two different organizations might just ask about a best practice or how do you handle this? Or have you ever done a trenching like that? And those conversations are not meant to be prideful or boastful. They're mostly meant to be helpful where people want to share, you know, we've done it this way and, and by doing it this way, we're safer. And by doing it th this way, we have better results. And, you know, 
it, 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 it's that collaboration, which again, to me is what our industry is all about. And again, maybe I don't know the best way to do a trench. Okay. But I can guarantee you one thing. If somebody asked me, you know, Jimmy, how do I learn about trenching? I could put them in contact with friends of mine that I had met throughout the years face to face. And that's the value of our industry. It's the, the smallest, biggest industry I know. And we've used that term before, but it does. I mean, I, I have friends every day that are on the West Coast and it seems like they're just, you know, two miles, four miles down in Boca Raton. You know, I mean, that's how we talk. We just talk, you know, very fluidly. That to me cannot be understated. There's value um, to what we're doing and, and being able to connect quickly on things like Zoom and text and whatnot. But oh, yeah. no, again, no, don't discount the value of in-person activity. And we have a lot of we have a lot of opportunity coming up, Jimmy. I'm not I'm not here to drive attendance to any of these things. Nobody pays us. Um, to to put their event in front of people, but we have events like um, Natural Gas Connect coming up for MSGA. Louis, Missouri. Yeah, that's going to be big, man. We're we're all pumped about that. Like, yeah. If you don't have plans to go, why? What else are you doing? You know, <laughs> uh, we're going to TGA in a couple of weeks, Jimmy. We're old stomping grounds. I'm, we're not trying to recap Texas everything, but we hadn't been together as a texas gas association in years now yeah that's the truth of the matter yeah. and we're excited to be together again and i hear some of our operators are opening up and they will be there as well so that's, um, that's good to hear and i know that group is excited too uh, no spoilers there um have you ever been then, to savannah james i will uh, I think my wife's going to join me for that one. That APGA event in Savannah is going to be awesome. Again, if you're not planning to go, why? What else are you doing? <laughs> it's my birthday week, I think, and I'm going. Um, it, we got to get out there. That's where innovation starts is in that collaboration, those conversations. Um, no matter where it is, whether it's on the golf car, course at the bar or, or in a session or after, right? Um, we, we got to get out there and break bread together in fellowship. So, um, I was thankful. So very thankful of our teams this week, Jimmy, um, shout out to them. Impressive. I'm not going to name people cause I'll miss people and I don't mean to, no, no. Yeah, I mean, I the collective team I've never, I said it on, on LinkedIn. I said it to internally. I've said it to a lot of people. I've never been part of a project or a team in which a better team effort was ever delivered. Yeah. And I've been on a lot of teams and I've been a part of a lot of projects. And no offense yeah. to these past ones, but this one was solid. Um, so very, very proud, proud brand daddy moment. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Speaking of daddy moment, my daughter, Summer Shower, just going to say, Magnolia oh, yeah? River, this was her first industry conference and I got to be that we got to be there with her. And she is, was opened up. Buzzing around, buzzing around. So many great people there. Like I said, we could just name people all day long. So proud. I think just watching social media the the couple days or well, really it's still going on. I can't keep up with it. It was cool. It was cool to see. It may just feel like we were um, doing what we, we aim to do. So, Hey, Jimmy, I, I hate to bring it to an end, but we got to hey, we we gotta 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 dig out from all this work we haven't been doing because of EWN. Con. Let's do it. Until next week, on Coffee with Jim and James, everybody stay safe. We'll see you next time.